Hey everybody, this is FireGraph 522 with my fourth tutorial. And you guys are probably glad to hear that voice again, huh? Yeah, I've been gone for like a month doing my own business, slacking off, you know, what I usually do. Uh, so I've gotten like a lot of my friends are like saying, dude, come on, make some more tutorials. Come on, and I'm like, I don't know what to make, so. I kind of just decided, what the hell, might as well just teach you how to use the expression gate again. But, a more updated version of what I know about it. Oh, just for you know, no expression 2. I have no idea how to use it. I use like C++, some other crap, I don't know. But, um, so what I'm going to be doing is, I'm going to be, um, teaching you... Uh, just some little freaking codes on there, that way you know how to get like started off and all that stuff. Alright. So, I'm gonna have this as my control panel for like all my expression gates. Uh, I'm gonna set up two little stage ones right here. This one will be like from, from a turret. Like, if you walk in front of a ranger, kind of like my old fourth tutorial. This is just going to be a plate that's going to raise up and down. It uses a button. Set up another panel for the button. Now then. So. Alright. Here's my panel. Now. I'm going to go expression gate. And if you have that, press the browse. Now, in your expression gate, press new expression. Uh, you can choose your model up here if you want. File name is like when you hit save right here. That's what it's going to save as. So I'm not going to save any of these, seeming that I don't really need to. Label, I'm going to name this um, defense. Because it's going to be like a base defense sort of. Inputs, I'm going to use a ranger. Or let's just write distance, and my outputs are going to be fire for turrets. Now, what's going to happen is I'm going to set up a ranger in the middle of this plate. And I'm going to walk in front of it, and the turret should shoot me. But again, the ranger's not that fast, so you probably can't sprint through it. We have to set up another one, maybe. All right, so. Now let's think. Let's look at the way how I how I used to write them, the old newbie way. I used to write them distance greater than zero, then fire equals one semicolon. Then you have to go to the next line, distance equal to zero, then fire. So that fire equals zero semicolon. Now, this way, uh, you could probably do more stuff. Like, let's say distance equals 100, then fire equals two or something like that. Of course, the two wouldn't matter, but. Um, you could probably do that with the new way I'm going to teach you. This way is old and kind of noobish because it's kind of like you have to write two lines and it kind of looks like you don't know what you're doing almost. So if you take off these, so now what we're going to type is so that way if distance is greater than zero then it's going to shoot. What we're going to want in line one, fire equals now, this, so far, is I'm setting this up for an if-then-else statement. So, like, if something is something, then it's going to equal one thing, and then if it's not what it equals, then it's going to be the opposite. So, kind of like, if, if distance is equals zero, then it's going to equal one. If it's not zero, then it's going to equal, like, ten or something, I don't know. So this way, we could just type this distance 
greater than zero, uh, then one semicolon or colon then zero in parentheses. Now, this way, if you think about it, how it said it would be fire is equal to distance greater than zero. If that's so, then fire equals one. If not, then zero. The question mark is just for this kind of statement. It's pretty much the then in the uh, distance. Ooh. Distance greater than zero, then fire equals one. The this is practically the same thing as this and that thing and that expression. So this way, you don't have to write another line. You're done right there. So let's just put this down. Fence. Let's go ahead and get a ranger. Well, actually, I'm going to get my turret first since I'm down here. Bullet spread, doesn't matter. You can have your damage, whatever you want. Let's put that there. Oh, I better put the turret down after I put the ranger. So, ranger, sh default to zero. Check, otherwise this won't work, right? Show beam if you want. Ignore world if you want. Output distance must be checked. Put that down. And then get your turret. And just put that right above it. So we'll go our fire to our expression gate. And so what happens is if you don't have another output, you can't like right click through it. Like I don't have another input so I can't cruise through there. But if you had another output, then you would have to like select which one you want. So distance goes to the ranger. Now when I walk in front of the ranger, it should shoot. Yep, just like that. Yeah, see, I can't sprint through it. I can't sprint through it without getting killed. Or without not getting killed. Um, so... Oh, by the way, guys, don't get on to me about this. You can just wire it to there. I'm gonna unwire this. You can just wire the turret to the ranger, and it works just as fine. But I'm just saying, you could do, you could do it that way, too. I'm just setting up, like, sample expressions. Now onto this plate thing over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this up. Let's get a hydraulic. Fixed. Checked. Just get in the center or something. Right click. And then on this I'm going to put it down. And I'm going to put this platform. Let's rotate it. That way our work is on the bottom. Now I'm going to go ahead and put a button on this, so that way it's button controlled. Now I'll put a value on to 1, and toggle checked. Alright, so, now let's go ahead and get our expression gate. Browse expression, after you save that one if you want. New expression, I'm not going to save it. Label, lift, inputs button, outputs, length. And I think I forgot to mention this, but you can have your inputs, like whatever you want, A, B, C, as long as they're not like semicolons or anything. Uh, no symbols, I don't think you can do that, otherwise it won't work. So let's try, uh, length equals button. This way, just put it right there. So whatever the button equals is what the length's gonna be. So button goes to button. And of course the value's not changing because it's only one. Or it doesn't look like it's the elevator. Let's try 10. See, it goes up and down, up and down, up and down. All right. So now that we have that, I'm going to show you how to write it a better way. So you can have like, well, like you can have a different value on the button. So let's try length equals button greater than zero. 
Of course, the zero could be like negative five or something. I don't know. As long as it's over that value, it's greater than uh, greater than zero, then scope one hundred. If not zero, and semicolon. Validate. So let's be validated. Let's update this. Now it should lift up to at least a hundredth height. Just like that. And it doesn't always have to be greater than, it could be less than. Let's see, less than 10. That way it's backwards. And if it is 10, it's going to be 0. You can just set this up multiple different ways. Well, this has been Paragraph 522 with my fourth tutorial. Have fun, don't burn yourself. Glad to be back, guys.